Development changes the environment. Development is something that we need. Development isn't the problem. It's how we go about that, the problem. There are many positive changes in the environment which development can bring about. But there are also many uh, inevitable uh, uh, side effects to it. And we think, I think we need to bear this in mind when we're trying to employ sustainable development uh, ethics and ideas. Environmental uh, impacts have social implications. And uh, many of these environmental impacts are science oriented or prompted by science and technological development. Um, what this is leading me to come to is the recognition of such things as socio-scientific issues. These are uh, social issues which have their origins in uh, scientific uh, progress or an application of science. And so what we're looking at here is not the fact that science is better or worse, but trying to take a holistic point of view to understand uh, what we're talking about when we say sustainable development. I'm going to turn now to um, the actual survey that um, I undertook. And uh, for the two members of the audience who are not from Wales at the moment, um, and I'm sure everybody knows where it is. Here we have our, 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 our native Wales, as it were. Um, and the other area was, of course, France. Everybody knows where France is. So I won't go down that route particularly. But the area of France uh, that, I was, uh, that I work in quite frequently is uh, Pas de Calais, next to North France, where uh, Combray, uh, close to Arras, is uh, the, 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 the licensing Paul Dewey. The sample size that I took in terms of Wales is uh, 104, broken down across the whole age range of 16 to 40. And in the French sample, it was entirely 16 to 20, and the sample size was in fact 130. So this gives a little bit of a, a, a manipulation to have to be done here. And what I'm about to present to you is um, purely descriptive, but with a set of questions which I hope you'll be able to comment on. Um, and uh, maybe uh, you have a, a, an input on some of the trends that seem to be apparent here. First of all, uh, very obvious, uh, I thought I would do that because I thought many people would be slightly dozy after the banquet last night. So um, what I basically did with this is that I looked at uh, UWCN, University of Wales, Newport, um, and looked at the age range 60, 16 to 40 plus, and the other age range, which is 16 to 20. Now, the idea of this is that it breaks down, strangely enough, into um, very close to 50-50, um, uh, although not exactly. And my idea here was to examine the fact is, is there a difference between the generations, if you like, the age range? in terms of their response to uh, environmental issues and environmental concepts. We've got this very common one that I think when you saturate people at a certain age with the doom, gloom, and despondency of the sky is going to fall, I think you can desensitize them to issues. And I just wondered if that was happening. And what we've got here, for instance, is that uh, this is the, 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 the the, the Likert scale that was used, although I'm not processing this data on a Likert basis. Um, I, I have written in a previous paper uh, that all the justifications that you can use to use Likert data, ordinal data, in a parametric manner, and I'm afraid I can't live with myself uh, because one and two will not make three. And so I've gone back to simply using uh, bar charts and descriptive stats. I need to find another way in other words. Although the literature is extensive in this, and uh, I think we're kidding ourselves. So let's have a look at this. Um, environmental problems make the future look hopeless. Well, with all the news that we get, this isn't a surprising concept, is it really? But what we've got here, 16 to 20, 42.6, to uh, strongly disagree. But the older generation seems to be uh, somewhat more optimistic. So we've got 64.9 percentage saying that uh, it's not quite that bad. We should probably do something about it. 
Where do we go to from now? Well, let's just stay with Wales and let's just have a look across the age groups. Um, this is rather interesting. Um, I'm willing to have environmental problems solved even if I have to sacrifice some aspects of my personal lifestyle. Well, what's this saying really? 43% of the 16 to uh, 20 age group uh, strongly disagree with this. Still the majority saying yes, uh, I'm happy to, uh, happy to lose some uh, uh, lifestyle uh, quality. But when we go to the 21 to 40 age group, we've got 21% um, disagreeing with this. In other words, 79% are prepared to do this. Interesting, I thought. Um, this is another strange one. If we look at this, and it's the responsibility of rich countries to solve environmental problems of the world, what do we get? In our 60 to 20 age group, we find quite a lot of disagreement with this. Um, I'm taking it, I should note, as being uh, responses one and two, even although two is a slightly less strong response, I'm taking it still as a disagreement. Over in the, in, in the older age group, what we have is that we have a uh, strongly disagree at 47.5, so a greater willingness to uh, have the richer, uh, um, more developed countries play a role in uh, ESDGC issues. Another interesting uh, question that arose was, well, science and technology can solve our environmental problems. Well, effectively, across the age groups, there isn't really enough going on there to make any great difference. But there will be when we start to look at the French data set. So I'll, I'll just skip on past that one. Now, this is quite an interesting one, because what we have here, and this is a major, major, a key question in my opinion, is, so far, I feel that my education has prepared me well for understanding the complexity of environmental issues. So what we have here is that the older generation is almost following a, a normal-ish distribution, but whereas um, what we have over here <coughs> excuse me, is a tendency to start disagreeing uh, about this, a greater disagreement there. But when we actually look at the French perspective on this, we find that um, in the uh, uh, UWN is Wales on the left, and Paul Dewey is, the, is on the right here. And what we have here is that in Paul Dewey, 75%, 71.5% are actually unsatisfied, dissatisfied with the fact that their education is preparing them to respond to environmental issues. So, a significant difference, and one question that might be raised here is the fact of, are we looking at the impacts of embedding ESDGC as a policy? Are we looking at an early response to quite uh, a recent innovation? Let's look at this again now across the two, the two data sets. We started with environmental problems make the future look hopeless. And we've uh, uh, now got a, a comparison to make, sorry, uh, a comparison to make here. And in Paul Dewey, uh, we have a greater um, uh, optimism than we had in UWM. 